Lock and load, the Suicide Squad is back. Hey everybody, welcome to a, uh, I guess I should say podcast edition of A Week in Geekdom. This time we're reviewing the latest uh, journey into the DC animated universe standalone movies, or whatever you want to call them. It's uh, Suicide Squad, hell to pay. Now, uh, in previous movies, I have complained at length about running time, about the plot, and all that stuff. And I truly believe that this might be one of the best animated features that I have ever seen when it comes to superheroes. This is... Wow, guys, this is so bloody violent. It is one of the most goriest animated movies I have ever seen. It's rated R, and it's done in this sort of grindhouse B-movie style that I really appreciated. And it's the perfect team, it's the Suicide Squad, that you can use to make this sort of movie. You've got the character of uh, Deadshot, Killer Frost, Captain Boomerang, and Harley Quinn, and they're joined by Copperhead and finally Bronze Tiger. None of the new incarnations of Suicide Squad use Bronze Tiger. Uh, the Assault on Arkham, uh, the uh, movies, the live action movie and all that stuff. So I was really missing the character of Bronze Tiger. He's pretty freaking badass. Now in this movie, it's sort of a little bit of a multi-layered uh, heist adventure flick. Uh, basically, at the beginning of the movie, Amanda Waller tasks uh, the Suicide Squad to retrieve this uh, jump drive with a lot of sensitive information that the character of Tobias Whale has in his possession on a moving train. Now, he, uh, the first iteration, I guess, it's, it's slight spoilers by the way, the first iteration of the Suicide Squad is uh, led, of course, by Deadshot, Vertigo, and other characters. Uh, it quickly goes south and just it, limbs start flying off. People are getting shot. There's a huge amount of blood being spilled. Uh, people are cursing left and right. It, it, it took me by surprise. I was not expecting this. I was like, you know what? It's probably going to be like a PG-13 thing with a couple, like maybe one F-bomb to... Nope. Nope, this, this is clearly R-rated material here, folks, for uh, strong blood, sexual content, drug, uh, drug references, and even some graphic, some brief graphic nudity, I should say. So yeah, after all that stuff, I'm not going to spoil the whole thing, but uh, the characters move on to a second mission, or at least uh, our main lead, which is always Deadshot when it comes to Suicide Squad, and he is tasked to retrieve this mystical fabled item called this sort of card that's like a get out of free jail card for the afterlife that a certain mystical character has in the DC universe. Amanda Waller wants it because she is ill. And uh, then, then, then we get the, the team that I mentioned earlier with Killer Frost and all that stuff. And that is where the fun really begins because First off, Christian Slater voicing Deadshot. That is a strange but awesome casting choice in my opinion. And he really brings a sort of trashy yet uh, simplistic and relatable version of Deadshot. I don't know, I really liked his take on it. You've got returning veteran uh, Tara Strong voicing Harley Quinn, which I gotta say was a little bit subdued. It wasn't exactly my favorite part of the movie i thought uh the whole time i was hearing like a uh it was an r-rated harley but she sounded like like a uh, xanax uh harley for some reason i i don't know i expected something completely different uh, i won't get into spoilers with the movie i've already said way too much i'll just say this the characters are spectacular they interact beautifully with each other and you really get the sense that this squad doesn't really belong together, but they work really well together for some reason. You also get a wide arrangement of characters from the DC Universe that I was not expecting to find in this movie. When you find out who the main antagonist in this is, you're going to be blown away because the movie does something really cool. It's not, or at least to my knowledge, it's not adapting, it's not adapting I should say, sorry 
a particular story. It's doing its own original thing. And it's a very cool story that relates to uh, this DC animated universe that started with Justice League War and all those other movies. It interconnects with all the stories that have come so far. And I gotta respect it for that. Uh, usually with the uh, with these animated movies, they're adapting famous storylines from the comic books, and you're always going to have haters, you're always going to have people complaining. Hell, I've complained in the past because they don't adapt it faithfully, or they uh, edit it a certain way, and they leave a lot of stuff, and they get too creative with it where you don't... Uh, where you have people that don't like it and other people that are a little bit iffy. I'm usually in the crowd where I welcome change, but it's it, you're limited because most of these movies are like 70 minutes, and I don't think that's enough to cover the whole story. Now with this, you're getting an 86 minute long movie. I think it's one of the longer ones in the uh, animated verse. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the 31st animated standalone movie, and that is really, really impressive. Most of them have been great, some of them have been, eh, they're okay, and others have been horrible. But for the most part, this movie gets it, great character interactions, great voiceover work, just a fun, compelling, original story that it's all about the bad guys. When it comes to DC Comics, they've got one of the best villain rosters around and they fully utilize it. Now, the action is intense, the language is strong, and it is bloody as hell. I cannot, please, I cannot recommend this for uh, younger audiences. Please don't be that douchey parent that goes, oh, it's an animated movie, what could go wrong? I'll let my kids see it. Don't, please. Have them understand the difference between what's happening here and real life. Please, I know it's silly because it's an animated thing, but it's not for kids. This is on a league of its own. It's set within that continuity. And when it comes to the art style in this, it's uh, it's serviceable. It's not the best looking animated feature. Some of the art could be a little bit better, especially when characters are in motion. There's a, a scene in a strip joint, if you will, where the dancing can look a little bit awkward. And the action sequences, for the most part, they look good. But, I don't know, the color palette could have been a little bit cleaner or brighter, and the fluidity could have been just a tiny little bit better, but that's just nitpicking on my part. As for the running time, I usually criticize them for being too short, but on this uh, occasion, at 86 minutes, it's just bright. I wish it could have been just a tiny little bit longer, so it was the actual 90 minute movie. But it's cool. It, it, maybe if you would have added a couple more scenes, it would have lasted a little bit too long. It's not too short nor too long. And I think that is what makes it special because of these characters interacting with each other. You get enough scenes to fully grasp the dynamic of this team. You know, one of the best dynamics in the Hell to Pay movie is having a moral compass in the character of Bronze Tiger. This is a guy that is an expert martial artist, but he's in it for the wrong reasons and got recruited to the Suicide Squad. And I think he plays off really well with a character like Deadshot that isn't that is a little bit unhinged and is willing to go the extra mile bronze uh can go as well but for totally different reasons meanwhile you've got killer frost which she is just a delight and is actually pretty hilarious i found myself laughing the most with that character instead of uh the go-to uh cliched uh humor character which is harley quinn I thought she really brought it to the film and Copperhead too. Copperhead was pretty awesome to see, especially because he is a contortionist and seeing his snake-like body and stuff, really awesome stuff. So yeah, Suicide Squad, hell to pay. I, I don't really uh, rate movies or anything like that. I just, uh, I approve of it. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty damn fun, pretty damn gory, and you will probably enjoy the hell out of it. Plus, there is a favorite character of mine that shows up, uh, one of the uh, classic heroes, if you will. I won't spoil it, 
but I was very taken aback by the character selection, if you know what I mean. Guys, thank you so much. This is a weird edition. I'm not used to doing podcast versions of my uh, show channel here on YouTube. But thank you. Uh, thank you, as always, for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Find me on your favorite social media platform. And uh, we'll talk about uh, this movie and then some. All right, I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode. <laughs>